morning. Uh, we're going to give sort of a brief overview, a little bit of the trip. Uh, we're not going to show really any pictures. I have one that I need to show you in just a moment. But uh, first I'm going to ask Trudy to come. And Trudy's going to give you just a little bit of an overview of our trip. Kind of what we did each day. And then she'll take some time to share a blessing uh, of hers from the trip. Okay? Good morning, everyone. Um, it is good to be back in North Carolina, but let me tell you, when we left yesterday, you know, when you go somewhere, I'm going to have to spit on it. Is that what you're telling me? You go somewhere, and it's time to go home, and you want to go home, but you want to stay, and that's where my heart was yesterday. I wanted to come home, but I sure wanted to stay in Texas, too. Um, this week was truly a blessing uh, as we were there and able to experience with Pastor Jason and uh, his wife, Katie, the ministry that they're involved in. It began um, Monday morning. It began with getting up and doing, fixing breakfast at 8 o'clock out the door at 10 at 9.30 to go knock on the doors at an apart apartment complex to gather the children together and to do worship and vacation Bible school with them. 12 o'clock, we're packed up and back at the house, a little bit of lunch. Then it's time to go out again at two before 2 to go to the next apartment complex and gather the children together and share with them in temperatures of 105 and 106 and 107 and 109. It was hot. But we had the blessing of a, being able to be on a playground um, where there was a um, covering and we were able to be there for a couple of days and then the next couple of days we had the shade of the trees and then packed up back at the mission house at 4 o'clock by 6 o'clock, the kids had been picked up that we had been ministering to in the morning and the afternoon to come back to the mission house to have dinner with us and to have more um, Bible school type teaching and music and just loving on these kids and sharing with these kids the love of Jesus. When we got there um, at, on Sunday last year, most of you know that we went to Mexico and ministered over there by doing construction and having the same type of uh, deal over there. We would do um, vacation Bible school type things over there too. And um, this year, and we weren't able to be at the mission house on Sunday morning for their worship service. So this year we were able to be at the mission house with Pastor Jason leading worship um, there with his people that are there coming to his church. And it was really and truly a blessing to be able to be there. One thing that was different this year with us was going and getting the kids and bringing them back to the mission house in the evenings to be with us and to fellowship more with us. And in doing that, we were able to have a women's group that we, a small group that we did a Bible study with this year. And uh, Amanda's going to come and share more about that. But Sunday evening, after we had worshiped, we had fellowship with his, uh, with Pastor Jason's church, uh, eating a meal. And then um, Sunday evening, we loaded up on the vans, and before the week was out, this van had no air conditioning, and there was, what, 15 or 16 of us on that van. It was over 100 degrees, and it was hot. But we loaded up on the vans on Sunday evening. I think this was one highlight. There were so many. Jeremy's going to share with you about just a special blessing that he had but there were so many blessings. But for me, one special time was um, loading up in the van on Sunday evening and going over to the uh, apartment complex. And um, there in the 
graveled parking lot where we would be ministering with those kids to prayer walk that area, to pray for the weak, to pray for those kids. See, most of those, a lot of the kids that would be there on um, in the afternoons at that apartment complex we had ministered to last year. So we knew a lot of the faces. Um, they knew our face. They were thrilled that we were back. Pastor Jason said that they'll start talking about it next week. Now, when when is all of it coming back? When is that group coming back? It'll maybe a year before we're back. But they are already talking about us being back there. And we love them so much. And as we walked that parking lot and prayed for what the Lord would do, not what we would do for the week, but what God would do, what we would see him, how we would see him working in that area. Pastor Jason and Katie have a love for those kids that it takes a special person to do that. God has to do that through them, and he is doing a marvelous work there. I pray that you would continue to pray with us as we pray for them. I have to tell you, I will not tell you no lie, I am totally and completely exhausted this morning. We, and it was exhausting. It was, it was hot, and it was exhausting. Um, we got back about 1 o'clock this morning. But I am telling you, exhaustion for Jesus Christ is better than any exhaustion for Trudy that there can ever be. I'll be exhausted for him the rest of my life in trying to be obedient to what he calls me to do. It may not be in Texas again. It may be right here in my backyard. But I want to be obedient to what he calls me to do. It was a marvelous trip. It was a trip that I connected to this year more so than last year. And I just um, praise the Lord for the opportunity. Um, you continue to pray for their ministry and for our ministry as we continue to help them uh, there in Texas. said I need to tell you who I am um, yeah several several months ago he asked if I would do a women's Bible study at the mission and I was like uh this was our first mission trip ever mine and my husband's first mission trip ever and I was like I don't even know what how to do mission trip but I had told Trudy several months ago that our Sunday school was talking about the book of Ruth. And Pastor Matt had done a study also on the book of Ruth. And I was telling her, I said, we re must really need to know this book of Ruth. So that's what I took those ladies for four days. And we broke down the book of Ruth. But... Um, before I tell you about that, I just wanted to read from Acts chapter 2, verse 46 and 47. And it says, So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And we saw that this week. We saw that, you know, I'm a visual learner, and that was exactly what happened, that we broke bread with these people, and God added to the house. We took the women into um, Katie and Jason's home. We had our meal there, away from the children. 
and we, we used that alone time, and we, we broke down the book of Ruth. And then when I would tell the guys at the, when we would have like a debriefing in the afternoon, I said, those girls are just clinging like on the book of Ruth like, like Young and the Restless, that it was just a, a love story, that they just, they asked me, they was like, what's, what's going to happen next? What, they were so hungry to know what was going to happen next. And it was just a blessing. And I said, it's, it's shameful for us that we are not as hungry as for the word of God as those women were. Um, these women, they opened up about their issues. Um, when they had different issues that they brought out, they had depression. Um, they were battling depression because of situations they were in. Um, one lady was battling a drug addiction, and you could tell from her past that she had scars up her arm where she had cut herself. She had done, you know, cutting. Um, they had women that kids had been taken away because of their drug use. Um, we had women that had rebellious kids. Um, we had women that had children with special needs and that was that was hard on them their with their special needs child they had broken homes where dads were missing or maybe both parents were missing and maybe the kids were being raised by grandparents they also would open up about maybe they had friends with bad habits they had people in their homes that were would drink that would do drugs you know and it was hard for them to be in a church environment knowing what they would go home to. They would say, you know, we heard one of the ladies from our group ask us to pray because she knew her husband was going to be out and she was afraid that he was going to be drunk driving that night. And to warn her kids, daddy's been drinking, so you know what to expect. Um... They also had struggles with living without things, living without maybe basic necessities. One lady, she had a home of five. There was five in her home. She had no washer or dryer. They did have a clothesline outside their apartment complex, but she would, for five people, hand wash all of their clothes, all of their sheets, all their towels were all hand washed. And then she could line dry her clothes. But even just basic needs, you could tell that when she came to dinner that she just ate so much because maybe that's the best meal that she's had all day or maybe the only meal that she's had all day. Um, but in the book of Ruth, we, they saw Ruth's loyalty and faithfulness to her family, which encouraged them not to give up due to their circumstances. They weren't they came from being, they didn't want to be a victim of their circumstances anymore. Because, you know, in the book of Ruth, you know, she had people die in her family too. She had tragic things happen. And she, she overcame them. And they, they would come back the next day. And what we had discussed in the book of Ruth, they would tell what they had learned. They, they would tell us how they had shared those stories with, one lady had shared what she had learned with her husband. One lady, and she had shared what she had learned with her family uh, over the phone or with her kids. And she would just, you know, they were, you know, because I would tell these women, you know, just like Ruth, don't you give up. And then one lady that's real battling depression, she just repeated that when she had gotten home, you know, just don't give up. And... It was, it was very encouraging to see how they shared with their families. And then at the end, we, we, at the end of the book of Ruth, then we explain how the book of Ruth mimics the Christ in his church and really brought it together for them. And, and that was a special, special thing for them to look at it, not just as a love story, but as how Christ loves the church. And... And then also, one of the things that the kids did for us is they, they had little notes on all of our beds when we got there and little pictures. 
little pictures and little thank you notes when we got there that was so sweet and um, yeah so I think when me and Brian were at the airport we're like we're coming back here very soon I don't know if it's going to be next July it may be Christmas it may be I don't know but we just had a bond and it was very hard to say goodbye to Texas it was very hard This is Brother Jeremy, or at least that's what Angie would call me, Jeremy. Um, man, what a blessing this trip was this time. Uh, as they said, last year was a blessing, but man, this year it just seemed like we had such a bond with these kids. Um, you know, we went in trying to grow these kids, and it just amazes me at how much we grow on ourselves on these trips. I got to experience so many firsts this time. Uh, first of all, man... I, w I was just studying my Bible a little bit one day. I was flipping through, and I really wasn't even sure what I was going to be studying. I was looking around in Ephesians, and I had a couple of little notes wrote out beside of me. And there was this little boy who came up beside me and said, Hey, what you doing? I said, I'm just studying a little bit, man. He said, well, Where's your notes? I said, Well, they're right here. He says, Oh, okay. And, man, he says, uh, Man, how do you be saved? And I, so I, I opened up the book to Romans, and I kind of led him down Romans Road, man, and I, I started talking to him. I said, man, would you like to accept Christ? And he said, yes. So, man, we just, uh, I, I had my first time. God used me. It wasn't me. God prepared this heart ahead of time. God used me to help to lead another brother to Christ. His name was Angel. A couple of days later, I had another opportunity, another first. I just uh, had the first opportunity to, to help lead a brother to Christ. Well, now the Lord's put another brother in, in my heart, and uh, he's come to me. This brother, his, his, uh, his first language is not English, it's Spanish. So, man, there's a translation. You know, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to lose something in translation. So we've got this brother there named Arturo, which was kind of in the same boat as these guys last year when we were there, but l this past year he accepted Christ. So he came in, and he was my translator and my mediator for this guy. And um, this guy also came to the Lord that day. So, man, not only once but twice did I get to, to be a vessel for God just to share his word to these people and um, just to help them to, to lead them to Christ. But God had, you know, had already done the work beforehand. You could see him working in their hearts. You could tell they were struggling with it. And uh, he, just, he just put it out there, and I thank him for uh, preparing me for that because I was literally scared to death. And uh, if it wasn't for him preparing it, I know that, that it wouldn't have been done. And also, not only did I get to uh, help to lead these guys, but I also got to experience baptizing these guys before I left. I actually got to do my fat first baptism. And if you see pictures, I'm not putting chloroform on their mouth. It is, it is actually just a washcloth because I know that's what you're going to be thinking because that's what it looks like. But, uh, but I did get to baptize these guys. And, uh, you know, it, it tells us that's what we're to do, to go out and we're supposed to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Not just me, you guys, um, anybody from the team, just anybody, right? A anywhere in the world, not Texas. You know, as Trudy said, here in our backyard. And, um, you know, the mission... The mission field is everywhere it's not just out in texas you know it's not in in foreign countries um i i saw jesus working in my own life i saw pictures of jesus in different things uh, i have a nephew that is autistic and um as he was growing up you know you would find stuff on the internet on how to comfort an autistic child how to do things well one of the children that angie was talking about the special needs children he was autistic, and man, this kid, he would carry on and scream and pitch a fit, and just one night, man, you could just see the mother was at wit's end with the child, and uh, the child was screaming and pitching a fit, and I remembered something, man, the Lord laid it on my heart, he said, man, you know, just, just take and embrace that child, and just give him a good, firm squeeze, you know, and this is just something I'd pulled off the internet years ago, and I took that child, and I grabbed him, and I gave him a bear hug until he passed out. No, I really didn't pass out. 
but but I embraced that child, and I, I, I healed him. And at first, man, he was resisting. He's like, no, no, mama, mama, mama. But then he slowly reached up, and he grabbed my neck and kind of rubbed it, and he pulled back. He reached up and he grabbed my neck, man, and within 30 seconds, that child had latched on to me. You know, it's just like some of us, right? When we, we're battling the Lord, you know, he's sitting there, he's reaching out to us, he's wanting to embrace us, and we're saying, no, Lord, no! But, uh, you know, once we grab hold and we latch on and we find that security in him, oh, God, ain't it good. So, you know, I, I saw Christ in that way. Um, There was a, a, a young lady named Emily. She was dirty, wearing the same clothes for three days, had dirt all over her knees, had dirt on her feet. Her feet were black. They weren't brown, the color of her skin. They were black, dirt all in her neck, lice in her hair. She's laying in my arms. She's finding rest, just like us, right? We come to God dirty. We come to him filthy, man, but... When we finally get in his arms, we can find rest. We can find peace. She was asleep in my arms, man. Just I could just look at her and I could say, God, this is the way you love me. You can love somebody as filthy as me, man. And, and you just love me so much more than I'm loving this child. She, you know, it's just a blessing to see that. And, uh, man, I can just see the way that God is working in, on me, you know, not just these guys. You know, we've got teenage boys as we're leaving yesterday. They're messaging us, and they're saying, I cannot believe that you guys spent that much money just to come out and love on us. I can't believe it. I mean, this is kids that ain't even hardly talk to you because they're shy, you know, but they, they're messaging you now and saying, man, I can't believe that. They said, I'm going to miss you. I can't wait till I see you next year. We built such a spiritual bond with these people and such a close relationship. Man, I've got family members that I'm not that close with. I was literally in tears yesterday at the airport when we were leaving. I, uh, I was trying to fight it in front of those guys because they were tearing up on me. You know, you've got 13, 14-year-old boys that's, that's loving on you like they're your son. And, uh, man, it, I was just really trying to fight it, you know, trying to be strong for them, you know, just telling them it's going to be all right. I'm going to be back. I got in through the airport doors, man, and it's all I could do, man. I just, I just broke down. Thank God Brian and Trudy was there to comfort me, man, because I, I wanted to run back to them. You know, I miss my family. I miss my beautiful wife and daughter. But, man, I just tell you, it was just such a, man, it was such a good time. And I could just really just see the Lord just, just working there. And, I could, man, it just amazes me. I would like to uh, give special recognition to our team. We got, uh, if, if our team would stand up, those that went to, to Texas with us. We'll give these guys a hand. These guys, man, each one of them had a special gift they brought. And they all stepped out of their comfort zone. I know Annette Turner told me, she said, man, I'm so nervous to teach. I'm so nervous. And her and Angie, they were in our little group. And, man, Angie, you know, she's, she's always with the little kids. So she's talking about all the little hairs in your head, and, you know, doing her little voices. All right? So uh, she's doing that. And then uh, Annette starts teaching. And I'm like, man, I thought you said you was afraid to do this because she's just like Angie. She's so natural with these kids, man. So it's just a, such a blessing to see that. And then you got Mama Trudy in there making sure everything's cooking all the time and getting done. You got Debbie organizing stuff. Oh, man, all these brothers. You got these young men over here. You got Jared and Dylan that are uh, helping with these young boys, playing basketball with them. I'm too old and fat, so, so they had that. But uh, and then you got Breezy. Breezy over there doing all these crafts. Her mother didn't get to go with us this year, but uh, she was doing all these crafts, man. She was just a little Tanya over there. And uh, by the end of the week, Breezy liked to play four square with me, even though she couldn't beat me. You know, I let her win every once in a while, but... Uh, <laughs> But uh, last year, she was Princess Breezy. This year, they was going, where's the Queen Bee? Where's the Queen Bee? <laughs> but uh, no, we, we all did have fun. And if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. But uh, let, me, let me ask you this. Can I ask for anybody that has said a prayer for us while we're going to raise their hand? Can I ask for anybody that helped donate any money? Keep your hands up. 
Keep your hands up, all of you. Anybody that, that helped uh, donate any money toward this fund, whether it be our meal or whether it be helping an individual. And what about the prayers? Keep your hands up for those prayers. All right? This is your all of it Texas mission team right here. It's not just these 15, 16 people. This is our all of it Texas mission team. You were in Texas with us, and we thank you and thank God for his provision on that. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for uh, sharing a little bit with us this morning just to kind of give you an idea of what all went on this week. I want to ask you a question. How many of you believe Jesus is coming back? Pretty exciting, right? Pretty exciting. He told his uh, disciples, look at it with me in John chapter 14. It's actually when I was a, a kid, it was one of the first verses that I, I ever memorized. Listen to it. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And why is he coming again? It says, and I will receive you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. Amen? What a, what a precious, precious passage of Scripture. So we know Jesus is coming again, right? And if you uh, give any time at all to study Scripture and look at prophecy and certain things and current events and so forth, what you find is that uh, it seems like it's just right around the corner, doesn't it? Amen? So y'all know I'm setting you up, right? So for all of you that truly believe he's coming again, and all of you that truly believe that it could just be right around the corner, I want to ask you a question. What in the world are we doing with the gospel? What in the world are we doing with it? Because for you to have the knowledge that Jesus is coming again, for you to have the knowledge of all kinds of different things fulfilling themselves and seeing it come to pass, for you to have all that knowledge and not be taking the grace of God and investing into others, I'm telling you, what a waste. What an absolute waste. So what am I trying to do? I'm certainly not trying to get all of you to go to Texas with it. That's not what it's about. But what my desire is, and I've been talking about this to the point of just, I know you hear it all the time. But what I want to do with my life is I want to inspire believers to be a part, to become a part of the assignment that God has given us. I mean, He's poured grace out in abundance. We spent years talking about the amazing grace of God and how salvation through Jesus has been made a free gift that all we got to do is take it. All we got to do is receive it. To as many as received Him, the Bible says in John 1, 12, to them He gives the right to become children of God. All you got to do is take it. And it was a blessing to get to see that once again this week, to see people that God had prepared their heart, to see them take that gift, to see them receive His life, and to be a part uh, beyond this, beyond that, because I know the commitment is to be a part of their lives until God takes us home. Because the, the, the assignment isn't just run around, share the gospel, get people saved. The assignment is to make disciples, ladies and gentlemen. And so I've got a picture. Are we there yet? Very special picture that I want to show you this morning. This is a picture. If you can see it, I know it's difficult, but uh, you can join us again next Sunday night and we'll show it to you. But how many of you can kind of make out what that is? Raise your hand if you can make it out a little bit. Okay, it's a giraffe and it is a, a black bear standing beside each other. No, that's not what it is. It's two people, guys. It's two people. Whether you can see them or not, uh, it's one of my best friends in the world, Jason Church, on the right-hand side with the purple shirt. And uh, a, a new best friend that's brewing, a gentleman by the name of Arturo. Arturo in that bright shirt, he is uh, 14 years old. So I want you to understand what's so exciting about this partnership is that last year, um, we got to meet Arturo for the first time. 
And last year in my conversations with Arturo, he was very confused. He, he just was really, really struggling with his relationship with God, to say the least, okay? But when we showed up there, it was amazing because it was immediate. After conversation with him that he was no longer confused, ladies and gentlemen. He was at peace in his relationship with God. Because for one solid year, what he's done is walk around with this guy named Jason. That's what he's done. And Jason has continually just poured into him and poured into him and poured into him. And I'm telling you, the greatest blessing for me all week was seeing this man at peace with God. But not only that, what, what Jeremy didn't share with you is guess who one of the, the young men that received Christ was during the week? His brother. His brother. So, so not only is this man at peace with the grace of God, but he's already turned out to the world, and he believes that it's his responsibility to take the grace of God and give it to other people. And he's just convinced, ladies and gentlemen, that he's got the life of God, and he wants others to have that life too. And so his brother gets saved. And then it was awesome, the fact that we just got to be a part of that. Jeremy... That's the thing that was so mind-boggling, I know, to him, because he's like, whoa, why, why me? <laughs> why me, Lord? Why are you using me for this? But Arturo's, I mean, Angel, his brother, has been watching him, and he's seen the change, and he, he's seen the difference between his life before Christ and now his life with Christ in him. And it was amazing how much he longed for that. And to see some people show up from North Carolina, just a bunch of crazy people who are truly excited about Jesus, who truly love the Lord, it had an impact. It had an impact on his life. The other guys, his name was Ernesto, and it's another friend of Arturo's, and no telling the impact that Arturo's had in his life. So what I desire to do, guys, is, is inspire you, inspire you with simple facts to know that God is working right now. Do you have to, to take a plane ride two hours, three hours, and, and go to Westlaco, Texas to find God working? No. He's working right here. Where is He working? Where's the harvest, folks? It's in the lives of people. So if, you, so if you're trying to find it in this building, you're looking in the wrong places. If you want to see where God's looking, look at people's lives. Make it your intention that instead of going to work every day just to do a job, go with the intention that you're called into your field, into your job to be light and salt, and that God will use you there if you allow Him to show you what He's doing and be willing to let Him use you. You don't have to go way over there. That's the beautiful thing about the team. They understand that. They embrace that. They don't see themselves on any pedestal because they took this trip. But we also understand, though, that God loves the world, ladies and gentlemen. So why under God's heaven should my love be any less than what God's is? Why should I not love the world? Why should I not care about the people in Westlaco? Why shouldn't I care about the people in Africa and to the ends of the earth? Why not? See, the thing that I love about this is that this guy don't have a huge crowd. He don't have tons and tons of people coming, but he, ladies and gentlemen, is a disciple maker. And so what we have the opportunity to be now until next year, whenever we go back, we have the opportunity to make disciples in Texas, even though we live in North Carolina. Is the grace of God amazing? Absolutely. Is the assignment that God has given us more amazing? Not more, but it's pretty amazing. Absolutely. But the problem is there are very few Christians who are embracing the assignment. Do they go to church? Yeah. Will they volunteer in the church? Yeah, many of them will. But will they embrace the assignment of God to make disciples? See, the amazing thing is that this might be the only disciple that Jason gets the opportunity to make. But if it's the disciple that God wanted him to make, so be it. Because we never know how far the next man's going to take it. 
We never know. I mean, he's already impacted his brother. He's already impacting his friends. Who knows what a 14-year-old is going to do for the glory of God if he'll surrender himself and let God use him? Who knows? So the, so the impact of investing in one person is far-reaching. It's far-reaching. So we get an opportunity to be there even though we're here. So I want to inspire you. Get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. I know it's scary. I know it's challenging. But one of the things the church has to do is repent of excuse making. I'm so sick of hearing believers say, well, I just, I just can't talk about this stuff. Well, you've done a great job learning your job. You've done a great job at, at learning other things that you seem to be able to talk about. So guys, listen. Let's stop making excuses. Here I am, send me, Lord. Send me where? Well, at my job. In all of my activities. Here I am, Lord. Send me, use me for your purpose. As you go, we go with purpose, right, church? We go with purpose, we go with hope, we go with excitement, knowing. See, that's the beautiful thing about going on a trip like that, is I know God's working there. So our prayer all week was just real simple. God, show us where you're working. So what should be our prayer now, today, this afternoon, tomorrow morning, when we leave for work, God, Show us what you're doing. We get out of the boat. And the beautiful thing about being outside of the boat is we get to see God do things that only he can do. Right? I mean, who can save a soul? I mean, who can do that? Only God. Only God. There's no one who can resurrect the spiritually dead but God and give them life. If you're here to, today and you have an extreme hunger in your life for God's word and to know truth, I want you to understand something and I want to give you a really interesting perspective. That if you're hungry to know God, and you're hungry to know His truth, I want you to understand the reason that is is because somebody's out there praying. Somebody's out there praying and saying, God, send somebody to me that can help me. God, send somebody to me that can, can help me come out of this mess that I'm in right now in my life. Do you understand that? I mean, God's not pouring out grace. He's not giving you revelation just so you can sit on it. He's giving it to you for somebody else. And not only that, but let me challenge you with this question. How do we ever retire from making disciples? Do we? I don't think that's possible. We never retire from it. But for some of us, we've got to be willing to let God change our thinking. Because for some of you, disciple making only exists in this building. It, 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 for some of us, this is it. You come here, this is where disciple making happens. But don't you think, aren't you convinced enough that if this were the way to do it, that Jesus would have modeled that for us? He would have modeled that for us. He would have built a building and he would have said, all right, all my disciples, come in here, let's gather around, let's sit, let's do it this particular way and let's do it. But no, how he did it was he walked with people. He talked with people and every day he went with intention. What's the Father doing? What's the Father doing? And he was always perfectly available for that. I'm grateful for these facilities. I'm grateful for it. But I mean, if all we're going to do is come and sit in it, what good is it? If that's all we're going to do with it is just sit in it and take in more that we really don't have the intention of getting out, what good is it? So, I'm going to shut up. Christian, could I call on you this morning to repent of your excuse making? Do you realize, listen to me, Christian, look at me, look at me. Some of you are about to die off to sleep, but look at me. Look at me for a sec. Do you realize that what you're convinced in your mind that you can't do, that God can do it through you? 
God can do it if we'll let him. So what I'm going to invite you to do, believer, is embrace your God-given assignment. And that is to be a part of the greatest enterprise that's going on in the world right now. And guess what? The majority of the world doesn't see it. And you know what that is? It's God building His church. It's God fulfilling His redemption plan. And He's inviting all of His children to be a part of it. Will you embrace it? And for some of you, the assignment is not interesting because honestly, you've never received His life. You've never taken His forgiveness. You've never begun a relationship with Him. So I'm just giving you the opportunity once again because Jesus has come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you're beat down with trying to be good enough, you're beat down with trying to live up to all these religious expectations that somehow through life have been put on you, why don't you just leave it, leave it behind you and embrace Jesus and begin to experience the life, the abundant life that he has for you. Let's bow for prayer. Father, thank you this week for just, just the opportunity, Lord. Uh, I mean, once again. God, I'm excited about today. I'm excited about tomorrow because, Lord, I, same thing. You know, same thing, Lord. I don't want my life to be any different. I want people to be able to look at me. I want to be able to look them in the eye and say, you want to know how to do it? Look at me. Imitate me, God. I want to be that kind of example. I don't want to be one of these that just plays the church game, God. I don't want to be the one that just lives however he wants to live and then comes in and puts a smile on his face and dresses up and acts as if everything's okay. Because, Lord, that's not what it's all about. So, Father, I'm praying for believers that we, like Arturo, a 14-year-old, will embrace our assignment from you. God, that we would repent of any excuse that we're making of what we can't do or, oh, I just don't have that gift, Lord. All these little things that we want to make excuses about. Lord, every one of us can talk. Every one of us can talk about the things that we know about. And so, Lord, we have no excuse. The problem is, Lord, many of us are just ignorant and we're not willing to put in the time and the sacrifice to learn truly what your word is saying. So God, help us. Help your church. Bring it to life, Lord. That We can be the light and the salt that you said that we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.